Hey gang, looking today at the Cold Steel Leatherneck SF. I am truly back on the path of wanting a large fixed blade knife again because what I have now, my current system, is really a series of companion knives which I love. I, I mean, I set my watch to the Falcon Even F1, but it's truly a companion knife, and by companion knife, I mean for an extended stay trip or even for a more enjoyable wood processing overnight or whatever it needs to be a part of a system like this um, so you need to carry the two things probably a saw as well so it kind of starts to limit your options with to backpacking into where you want to go you, want to, you wouldn't want to have walked too far when you start carrying these multiple wood processing options because wood processing as much as we all love playing with knives it's a smallish part of camping and bush stuff uh, in, in Australia really because we don't need that fire to, you know, not die like you do in America. At least not three months, uh, at least not three seasons out of four here. The winters do get cold, but indeed, summer, autumn, spring, a fire is more of a luxury than a necessity. So, I got to thinking and I thought I would have another crack at getting a large fixed blade. If you've watched my channel for a long time, you know that I've pretty much had that SOG Tsunami, which I've now unsold, which I did love. Uh, I had a, a, um, a K-Bar USMC which I liked but it didn't feel quite robust enough to use. So the experimentation begins. This knife comes at the hearty recommendation of one of my favourite and most long term subscribers, Killer Deegan. He has uh, attested that this knife in his own experiences beats out Cold Steel SRKs, Rat 7s, um, uh, what else is he saying? Um, a Sog Force, uh, Schrad, uh, SCHF uh, 37. In his opinion, of course, and he's done a bit of testing. You can indeed click his channel. You'll probably find him in the comments and check it out. It's um, it's definitely compelling enough for me to give it a try myself. And it does have elements that I do enjoy in a survival knife. So let's get to it. Let's break it down. It comes in this box. This is all all, all I got. Just the box and the knife. So didn't come in a. Um, paper wrapping or anything like that, it just came inside the actual sheath, so that was cool, I ordered it from an eBay seller, I thought I was ordering the Tanto one, but then pleasantly enough, this one showed up on Friday, so that was very, very cool. Um, elements I like of this knife, it's a stainless steel survival knife, see I like stainless steel survival knives, as long as they are, the, the rule I can generally attest to, is a either a lower quality, um, as an edge holding, or sort of a cheaper stainless steel as they will be, uh, or a carbon steel, just a straight carbon steel. They're the blades that I think you want in a survival knife, unless you've got the money to do it properly and spend it on either a laminated VG10 or um, the and what's the new Falcon even steel? They're using a um, a boron type steel or something, um, or a 3V or something like that, like a proper expensive tool steel or infi or something like that. I'm probably going to steer clear of other sort of halfway mark steels like D2 ever since uh, this experience here, as you can see in the previous video. So, stainless steel, this is the 4116 stainless steel, which uh, they're using on their light series, and they're using on um, a couple of, uh, there's a new folder that's they've got out this year that's using it as well. It's very comparable to the Victorinox steel, so it is very, uh, very tough, very, um, prone to wear, but it's very highly stainless as well. And in a fixed blade knife, I think that's absolutely fine. I don't mind having to sharpen a fixed blade knife because fixed blades are easy to sharpen because you've got a big blade and you can use any sort of stone. You could grab a, an ax stone and really in the field you can get a working edge back on it. So I have no problem with a fixed blade knife, darling. Another element I like of this knife is my own personal taste. I prefer the enclosed rounded handle. I'm not a big fan of slab knives, unless they're done very, very well. Um, I always prefer to have an enclosed handle, Falkniven, Mora, things like that. They just feel better in my hand. And this one, it's sort of, um, I mean, the whole design of the knife, it's definitely inspired by the, the Kaber, but it's um, very much got a, um, a nice enclosed handle. The same appearance of, sort of stacked washers, but it's actually Kraton. It's a solid piece of Kraton. And it's got these, where it says cold steel is not only to show the fab fabulous brand um, 
brand topography there ripped straight out of 1980s credits of a um, Dolph Lundgren film. But um, not only to show that, but it's also a really good finger finger trapper there, and it really does form a very very comfortable grip. So enclosed enclosed handle is another thing I really like. Uh, it's a full tang. There it is. That's the tang of the knife. So that's quite wide. That's probably if you trim off the sides. If you just draw a straight line from there. It's probably almost as thick as the knife tang. The knife would probably rat, a, rat tail a slight bit from the blade, but really. And it's still just as thick, so they didn't thin to hang down or anything like that. So this should be a very structurally sound knife. I always felt with the K-Bar, they were a little bit too fast in hand, sort of, which is fantastic for a, a combat knife. And I'm sure you can do lots with those K-Bar knives, but this one definitely feels more solid. Another thing I like is this grind. I think it is a hollow grind. If you look at it really closely, so look at that angle going down there that the light's catching right now. There is a slight concave to it, so I would say it's a hollow, but a, it's a, sh a shallow hollow. So it should have similar properties to a flat grind, which should make it good for um, pushing through wood, as in batoning through wood. So when you're with a flat ground knife, as we'll look at with this rolled, the theory is, and I've watched a few videos on it, the theory is that um, there's no relief, it's constant wood to steel contact. So if the wood is perhaps a bit twisted, the wood can grab a hold of the entire knife, starting with the thin edge, and crack it from there. Once the thin edge starts giving away, that's when even the thicker steel up here will give way too. Whereas this, the contact point will be this line here, and it's quite thick steel there. It's as thick as the rolled, but it should be a more um, it should be a more ductile steel as well as not letting that edge stay in contact with the wood. So my theory about what happened with this one is the edge started to crack because it was in constant flat contact between these two bits of wood. Wood was perhaps twisting a tiny little bit or just tough wood, and the edge started to give, and then it was like a house of cards coming down. So I like that about it as well. The uh, blade spine is quite flat. You can throw sparks off of it, um, but the coating will probably hinder you a little bit. The coating is just that um, cold steel. It's not the DLC coating. It's just the cold steel Tuffex um, Tuffex coating, which I think is basically paint. So I'm sure it'll wear off and look rather cool. So this is a seven inch blade. So it's getting on your larger side. It's got another thing I like about this. It's a, it's a bit of a wider blade than a K-Bar and they've actually They've swedged it a little bit for you know, combat or piercing purposes, but they've added a slight wave up here as well, just to make it a little bit more front heavy. So chopping should be a bit better than it was with the K-Bar. The K-Bar just felt a little bit ineffective. It was fine. The K-Bar to me is like the ultimate average survival knife. This is probably better in a few attributes. So that's what I'm looking at here. You can of course use this cast pommel, to um, this machined pommel rather, to pound your steaks in, things like that. Uh, it's pinned on um, with the pin there, no worries at all. The sheath, uh, Secure X, um, just a point of advice, um, just from pretty lots of anecdotal evidence is when you put the knife in the sheath, just let the spine tr let the spine lead you lead you in because um, apparently if you let the edge touch the um, inside of the sheath too much, this material is slightly glass reinforced, so it'll dull your edge a little bit quicker. Easy remedy is when you're standing up, just let it glide in. Follow the spine. Not a hard thing to do. Um, in fact, you probably end up, if you're not looking at the spine, trying to get that muscle memory down, you probably end up just finding it with the tip of the knife and following it down like that. So there you have it. Um, and it just affixes just via a belt loop there. Cool. Little strap there with, with buttons. Pretty overall, pretty high quality sheath. You'll pay about $100 for this knife, which is good for a 7 inch knife. You'll pay about Seventy to eighty dollars for um, the Tanto version, and then really below that, you're starting to get into the really ultra budget knives. Schrade will still sell lower than this, and Schrade is still a very very good deal. But if you want something a bit different, perhaps something in stainless steel, um, then this is definitely a good purchase, I believe. Um, there might be a um, an element of perhaps being too much of a jack of all trades for a hardcore survival knife, but I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to carve some wood with it, I'm going to use it on some uh, some logs, and I'm going to put it up against the very stump that failed the Vox Rolled. And uh, let's put that matter to bed all together. Okay, let's get to it.
wood is cut from the same piece. It's actually the it's actually a sister piece of this one. Uh, fits together somewhere like that. Same actual log. And this is the one that killed the rolled. So let's see how we go. Actually, we'll cut a baton first. Don't really have a good one anymore. make a suitable baton. Jeez, it looks tough. It's me. Much tougher than the last piece. Let's relieve the pressure a bit. The problem with that circle structure, it just doesn't give an inch. There's actually like literally no space for the knife to get into. So we'll just relieve that a little bit. This is a technique you should probably be using anyway to get your tinder rather than splitting right down the middle. Still not going in. <laughs> Wood is just knotty as I think. This is where the knot was. <laughs> oh, there's lots of little <laughs> poor leather neck. Lots of little knots all through. The proper thing is giving way. The wood is giving way, not the knife. Which is what should be happening. <laughs> yeah, there's a big ass knot there and lots of little lots of little nipple knots there, so um, it's definitely definitely holding true except for that paint. <laughs> I think the Vox rolled would have been very, very dead by now. In fact, it was. Indeed. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. For a knife that's not even 
really marketed the same as the road for you know general survival this is more of a combat utility I would say that that's done a fair bit better Very hot, to, hot day. It's about 40, 43 degrees out right now. So the uh, that's not water. That's my sweat. Yes, indeed. I think we have a winner. If you're going to compare this to the Vox. Definitely carve. Carve all your feathers and such. No worries at all. It's adequately comfortable for the type of knife this is. A bushcraft knife it ain't, but if you're expecting that then you're mistaken. Longer blades are good, you need less effort, especially if they're sharp. You can just use the, like the whole edge to do the job. You're not push cutting as much, you're draw cutting. That's a good slicer, not too bad at all. Well there you have it. Preliminary testing, of course, not a full review by, all, by any means. However, it's split wood a lot better than the Vox Rolled, and it's a knife that is uh, not marketed for the same purpose as the Vox Rolled. Literature on the Vox Rolled, wow, that blade is very, very hot. So, the literature on the Vox Rolled, it's a survival knife, that's what they say. It's, you know, you can affix a lanyard for heavy chopping tasks and all that sort of stuff when you read about it. So. Um, I just did some reasonable chopping into some pretty hard um, semi-alive wood with this and edge test. That's fine there. Let's find the chopping edge. It's fine there. How about in the middle? Let's draw, draw slowly across. Pretty darn good. So the thing with splitting is, the splitting won't hurt your edge pretty much at all. It's just that initial getting in there. So really, it did take me a while to get into that wood because it had that really strong spherical, um, or strong rounded, that round, when a wood is, when wood is round like that, it's like under pressure, it's holding itself together. You split a little bit of the edge, it lets the, lets the tension out. Which is why even with the rolled yesterday, I didn't try and go straight through the middle. I um, try, was trying to take a third off or so, and um, yeah, it just died instantly. This one just took a lot more abuse than I put the rolled through. And I know because I had it in my hand and I had the rolled in my hand, the rolled just shattered like glass. And this one, I was worried about it to be honest because of obviously what's happened so recently. But I kind of babied it a little bit at first, but then those last few logs, that was a fair, that was some fairly hard strikes going on. You can see because it's taken the coating off. I was hitting it so hard. The knife is still dead straight. The uh, tough X has come off a little bit on the wear lines, which is exactly where it should be coming off because that is the part of the knife that is coping with the stress of the wood, not the edge. The edge is still razor sharp. So my theory with these survival knives, if you are going to be using them for fire prep, get something that's saber or hollow or convex ground, something that won't have the narrow part of the blade in constant contact with the wood. 
that's that's my suggestion and that's based on only a little bit of research but I think the math holds true um, carving it was fine this handle is a combat handle it's for maximum grip and it's probably a little bit um, a little bit rough on the back here for barehanded um, carving tasks because when I was gripping onto it my thumb was against this ridge here which is where the, the um, rubber coating meets the, meets the um, empty cold steel branded area so my thumb was finding its way there and I've sort of got a little bit of soreness uh, perhaps a little bit of a blister will roll up there so I'd say for um, chopping and carving just go a bit easier and um, I mean I was trying to sort of wrench through that wood a little bit more of a test rather than in, for enjoyment or for, for practicality um, but I'd say just either put some gloves on or just go a bit slower just perhaps um, perhaps wrap your hands all around it like that and let your index finger um, take the brunt and just support your index finger with your thumb that's the only bit of advice I could give for chopping um, you can hold on to this little bell shaped bit at the end really really well with just like a, a partial grip and you can flick chop pretty pretty easily as I did at the start of that training or testing montage so cold steel leather neck that is a good knife for for how much you pay especially I mean you pay more in Australia for everything in Australia you pay ten dollars less for a Gerber strong arm which goes to about there made of roughly equivalent steel I believe 420 HC uh, 416 Krupp um, they're good softer steels good for survival knives I wouldn't go I'd be hesitant to get any of those 154 cm knives or even S30V knives unless they're really thick I'd be quite hesitant to be putting them through too much stress even the VG10, there's a reason that folk can even laminate it because they know it would crack if you um, just made the whole knife out of it. So in my opinion, I'd suggest getting a knife like this made of similar steel. Um, if you're going to be doing lots of carving, this guard might bother you a little bit because I always find myself wanting to get up there and the guard does get in the way. So that's just the basic. It's, you choose, you want a guard, you want a guard because there's two reasons, I guess. Obviously, defensive reasons which don't interest me at all but also there is some merit for a survival knife to have a guard for fatigue when you're getting tired perhaps it's better for the fine carving to not be as easy as long as you don't if it means you don't slide your hand up and cut your finger off sort of thing so there's there's method to the madness I'm sure even using it as a survival knife cold steel leather neck initial thoughts very very positive thanks very much for watching guys uh, on the horizon is a Falkniven A1 that is the knife that I've chosen to be my one tool knife. This one shall remain definitely a viable budget solution but I have a feeling the A1 is going to destroy every other knife I've used so far. So we can look forward to that. Alright fellows, I'll um, see you in the next video. Bye!